Firstly, I would like to thank uh, the Ning group for inviting me and Kote here to uh, present and to uh, create uh, a work that you might see later on downstairs. Secondly, I'd like to apologize for not being earlier in this session, attending this session, just because we had to put together the work downstairs. It's not polite from uh, our side, but we're working on the work, actually, downstairs. And thirdly, I'd like to stress that uh, what I'm presenting here is, has nothing to do with uh, the project downstairs. So, uh, uh, what I'm talking about here is quite high-tech. What you will see downstairs is quite low-tech. Uh, and that's very intentional. Now, um, I will very quickly say a few things about uh, some research work that we're doing in the New Technologies Laboratory in the Department of Communication and Media Studies in the University of Athens. Uh, we are researching what we call locative media or locative media, and uh, we're trying to in investigate uh, this media from uh, the uh, design perspective uh, and from the social psycho social psychological perspective too. So how people use, how people appropriate this media. Um, I, I don't think it's it's uh, useful to get into the theory of it. That this is these are some theoretical models we have developed in order to understand locative media. Um, very quickly, for those who do not are not acquainted with the term, uh, locative media are uh, media which have emerged out of the convergence of uh, uh, mobile uh, communication technologies, uh, location detection technologies like GPS and uh, uh, networks and and the web, because uh, usually they uh, they work through the web. Most of the systems may work, some of the systems may work through the web. And um, so what, what in essence happens is that uh, uh, the coexistence of these mobile wireless networks, uh, digital media, um, and location detection, what's quite interesting about it is that uh, uh, computer mediated communication used to be quite immaterial on the web, online. Um, and um, what we bring into this form of communication when uh, you introduce location detection into it is that you bring the possibility of uh, interpersonal communication. What means that people who may coexist in the same space could also in parallel communicate through this system too. Uh, and could coordinate their activity also, which becomes quite interesting when, when uh, you try to investigate how people interact socially or they could work in, in groups uh, and how they behave when they do so. And of course, artists are also utilizing this media in a, usually in a very critical manner and, and in order to, to uh, understand and uh, in order to uh, find out um, how they might work in a social political context. And uh, one, one interesting uh, direction in the research we do is uh, to try to, under, to, to, to categorize uh, the existing uh, applications uh, developed by artists and in order to understand uh, how they work. So artistic innovation usually, um, uh, they, they can reconfigure our understanding of this media and, and how they may affect our life uh, in the city. And I very quickly go through a couple of examples of these works, like Elias tracking trans trans scenes. It's, 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 there's no point uh, discussing these in detail. Sorry about that. Uh, Riders Paul Blast Theory are one of the most important groups working with local media. And uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, Terry Ruiz, beautiful poetic works. Urban Tapestry is one of the oldest applications of that sort, Esther Pollack's milk and other very interesting projects. And uh, another direction the research we do um, has to do with, it, with studying the, as I said, the socio-psychological aspect of how we use this media. This is a uh, representation of uh, what we created of 
what, what the use of locative media uh, may look like. Um, and uh, this is a kind of a map of uh, different uh, disciplines that may relate to the investigation of locative media. I know it's all Greek to you, but I didn't have time to translate it. Um, so one, one project that we uh, worked on, and I'm happy to see Agei Gazik, who was in the team with us, uh, that we worked on actually studying uh, the, uh, the way that people socially interact when they use this media. So we developed a, a locative media system. Uh, that's the interface of the system on a mobile phone. People coexisted in this interface, so you had like uh, uh, two groups of eight or nine people uh, co coordinating their activities. Uh, we designed a game, um, a game-based activity in order to have uh, rules in the activity that would be uh, implemented uh, because that helped us uh, conduct the experiments we wanted. And uh, we conducted this experiment in order to study how people behaved within groups and between groups uh, when they uh, actually conducted this activity, a game-like activity. Uh, so that's images from the interface and also we also find out that Google Maps was not good enough for us so we had to design our own maps uh, graphically I and mean, graphic design wise. Uh, for many reasons Google Maps has so many mistakes and problems. So we had to redesign this and introduce uh, uh, several uh, aspects in the visual representation in the two dimensions. And here's images of the uh, experiments. So it's, it's interesting to say that, you know, when you use such an interface, you uh, coexist in there and in there too. And so it, it, in essence, you, you exist in a digital spatial context, which also exists in real space, in physical space. So exactly this, this coordination of physical and digital space um, kind of creates a hybrid, so to say, a spatial experience, which we find very interesting as a, uh, as a direction to study in many ways. Uh, we also um, worked on, uh, we used qualitative and quantitative methods because they're both useful for many uh, different aspects of the experience that you need to study. And uh, we also worked a lot on uh, trying to understand the spatial knowledge uh, that's being uh, created in people's minds out of the use of the system. So we, we worked on sketch maps of representations of what uh, the space that they worked on looked like uh, after they uh, actually experienced. So the environmental cognitive aspect of uh, this experience is a major issue that we are trying to pursue when we work with this media. Uh, how much time do I have left? Because I'm trying to run through very few things quickly. Ten minutes? Five minutes? <laughs> so these are images from the experiments. So I'll very quickly go. Um, that's that's going to be simple. Well, um, one thing we are doing lately, and it's quite important for us, is that we are organizing a uh, conference which is called Hybrid City. Uh, we did this uh, in 2011, it was actually a symposium with invited speakers, but next year we are lucky enough to have some funding so that we actually put together a proper conference, peer-reviewed conference. It's going to take place at the end of May of 2013 in Athens and you're most welcome to attend. Uh, you can check out the uh, website for information. Uh, the deadline of uh, paper submissions has expired. However, if somebody has something related to that, and you can speak to me today, I can you know, still take in a few papers in the next couple of days, because next week we are sending them out to reviewers. Uh, and so this, um, and you can also follow the Facebook uh, group and page of this uh, thing. And the, the, the key theme in this conference is er open urban data and visualization of this data. Uh, I, I show this first, uh, and then I, before I finish, I would like to show you a project that we uh, put together in the previous conference. Uh, 
This was a workshop that was headed by uh, Martin Rieser, who's professor in uh, the Montfort University. And um, he worked with uh, a team of, an interdisciplinary team of architects, designers, artists, and uh, computer scientists, uh, mostly from Athens. Um, and uh, we put together a project called Codes of Disobedience and Dysfunctionality. Um, now, quite often, locative media are used in a, in a manner that they try to um, exploit the technology, try to uh, investigate the boundaries of how you use this technology. Uh, it becomes quite more interesting when, when locative media help us understand what's going on in, in the urban context. And that's exactly what we try to do in this uh, workshop. So we, we um, chose the title because disobedience and dysfunctionality are two very important characteristics of our social life in Athens lately, in the last two <laughs> couple of years. And uh, so we, we, we really played with these two uh, issues and we, we chose a very specific street um, in Athens, which is very, very uh, <coughs> overloaded with meaning, political meaning and uh, uh, content in many ways, meaning that at the one edge of it was exactly the place that uh, a 15-year-old kid was murdered by the police in 2008 and all hell broke loose afterwards. And on the other edge of the street you have a very posh neighborhood. So you have these two extremes at the two edges of the street and this exist and they have a threshold in between. So what we tried to do with utilizing locative media in this case was that we went there and we, so in a, in, with an ethnographic like methodology, we tried to go there, interview people, talk with people, hear their stories and create audiovisual content out of their stories. And then we, uh, we positioned this content in the street through, by using a uh, uh, QR codes, and uh, so you could actually go there, find uh, a graphic of the QR code, and then uh, with a sort of an embedded reality uh, manner, see a video which was positioned in a place where the content came from, in a way. So you had a layer of information which actually laid on top of the actual physical street, and the content in there related to what the people in the actual street had told us about. Um, and this, uh, this is some imagery from the street. It has to do with uh, graffiti, which has been erased. So in one case, we actually put back the graffiti there. Yeah. Uh, it has to do with closed shops, and we actually played with existing graffiti. One of the very important uh, interventions existing there is fantastic graffiti and collage on the walls, amazing stuff. And so we used that and we actually deconstructed that or played with that and the compositions, the graphic design compositions that were created and they were put back in to the place where they came from in a way. So we had a, a reinterpretation of the actual graphics that were there. Um, this is images from the workshop, this is the map content. And these are the graphics that were actually positioned as uh, stickers or posters back in the space. I can actually go there and, uh, you know, the QR code system click and then go back to the web page and see the actual video. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, online access here and I can't show you the content, but you can, you can find all the content. If you go to the Hybrid City web page, there's a, a button there which says Hybrid City 1. Click there and you will find the whole uh, application and all the content online and you can view it yourselves. So that's some images from the actual walkthrough of the space and the imagery that was positioned there. I mean, you know, graphics from floor were used in the collages. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to waste more of your time and I would like to invite you all to come to the conference next year. Thank you very much. Yes. Any questions?
describe, which is an interesting technology, but with a certain emphasis on, on, on the art, I thought, especially at the end, the, the end which was almost like reenacting the, the anarchy on the walls in the cathedral. But there's another component to what you have been doing, which is uh, the political implications mm -hmm. that revolutions can start. You can start a revolution tomorrow morning, shall we say, and you can map everybody. And which becomes, I mean, it's been used, it's been used a lot in the spring um, revolutions and so on, but, but also in every, even Western countries are very, very cautious and worried about this. Um, and, and it's not just uh, social media, this is specific spatial, this is uh, somewhat like milita militarizing the spaces as well. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this way of looking at your project has been uh, something you have been considering or being aware of. Yeah. And if so, how, how can you deal with this new weapon that you're in? Well, see, uh, the problem with mobile communication is that uh, the way it works, uh, I mean, through mobile providers, is totally hier hierarchical. So it's totally controlled by, by mobile providers. The way out is to actually work through the web. Uh, they can still track you, obviously, the providers if they want. But uh, working through the web, you can still get away with uh, doing things that are not totally controlled, just like we, what we do online on, on the internet. So the coexistence of these two technologies does help you avoid being tracked completely. Uh, well, I'm you know, simply oversimplifying things here, but I'm trying to stress the importance of the structure of the technology as to how free or not free you are, in, in, or how you can get away with not being surveilled. For that matter, uh, and that's exactly what and, you're saying. Yeah, obviously, uh, the uh, these technologies have been used. I mean, it, Howard Rainbow in his book Smart Mobs refers to a couple of uh, mobile technologies that have been used to coordinate uh, um, not street fight exactly, but uh, uh, sort of uh, activity on the street. Uh, like in Philippines, uh, not this kind of technologies though, he refers to all the technologies, SMS and stuff. So how, how you can coordinate activity on the street and you can get away from police uh, in riots and stuff, right? Um, so obviously, yeah, there are applications there for that. Uh, and obviously we're thinking, but we're considering that, uh, we haven't worked on that yet. And I'm not sure, you know, it's, it's not an easy issue to track and deal with, right? And uh, now, in, with reference to the, the more revolutionary um, aspect, then, you know, whether you know the Arab Spring and how the, the, these technologies have been helpful or not, well, you know, it has, it has been uh, talked about quite a lot, and you know, there's many people that say that uh, oh, you know, it was done because of Google and because of Facebook, and it wasn't done because of Facebook. You know, it was just a little trigger. And you know, if you ask so social scientists that have been studying this thing lately, and I've talked to a couple of them, you know, obviously that's a deeper issue to investigate in. So it's oversimplifying when we say that you know these technologies have done that. No way. They have helped achieve that in the particular way that it happened, but it's a much more complex phenomenon, I think. And you know, these these revolutions would happen anyway. They were waiting for a uh, a trigger to, to, to happen. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but I, we haven't done work, research work on that yet, but it's, it's certainly a thing that's uh, on the cards to do at some point. There's a lot of interesting work uh, done by artists. Some of them will actually be in the Hybrid City Conference. Uh, artists who hack these systems to reveal um, their potential. Um, and they do that in a very critical manner. I mean, Julian Oliver is a very, very good artist that does that. And 90, 95% Julian will be one of the keynote speakers. Uh, I'm saying 95% we're still trying to find the funding, but we're, we're almost there. Um, uh, Kovacs, Stephen Kovacs, the guy who organized the Transmediale, also talks about open data and in the urban context, and he's going to be a keynote speaker in the conference. So there's, there's uh, many uh, aspects of uh, which are close to what you're saying. I mean, open data, 
the, the right of citizens to urban data. You know, there's organizations that have this data. Don't they belong to us? Oh. And if they do, how can we use it? And we can use it when it's probably being visualized. Uh, so the, the, there's a lot of, I mean, this is a very uh, important political issue too. Uh, and it's not exactly GPS related, <laughs> located media technology, but it's very much related. It has to do with a representation of urban space. Has a, it has to do with working uh, concurrently on a layer, a digital layer representing urban space and physical space too. So it's a kind of a hybrid interface. Yeah, you know. I hope I answered you. Yeah. Um, somebody old enough to um, remember, um, in 1977 in Bologna, there was um, a, a, a movement called Autonomia, and it was uh, using radios, uh, radio transmitters, basically. Uh, to mobilize people in the streets of, of Bologna, the metropolitan Indians as they were called. And, um, you know, the, the government realized that they were, you know, what they were doing, uh, and so they'd shut down Radio Alley Chair, for example, uh, because, you know, the, the people who were broadcasting were, mo were organizing the, the streets, you know, knowing where the police were coming down, alerting, you know, the students and the unemployed and the rest of them. Um, and, uh, and in the end, I think they, they had a, a radio transmitter on the back of a car which would move around the city, <laughs> uh, you know, getting that information across and transmitting it to, to the, uh, to the uh, activists, you know, on the street. So, so, I mean, that's just a little flashback to uh, another kind of way of doing the same sort of thing, but what you need is a will to resist. Uh, to start with, I think. Absolutely, and I think that uh, this uh, local media art uh, experiment have a lot to do. I mean, they look back, their roots are communication arts. Yeah. You know, are utilizing mail, utilizing uh, radio, utilizing media, communication yeah. media. And, and uh, a lot of it is done in an activist sort of uh, mm. approach. And at the end of the day, internet art and most of these artists don't necessarily consider themselves as artists. I don't think they're mm. interested to be called artists at all. I mean, most internet artists of the 90s would not want to be called artists. You know? mm. They're creative people that, yeah. that are doing projects, whatever. Mm. Uh, and they work, I think, in this uh, common ground between art, uh, activism, social intervention. Yes. You know, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, you're right. It's very, very much related. Yeah, it sounds familiar to me. Yes. It's the same with Polytechnic Students Rising. They had a radio, which was basically the, the transmitting the... And the same in Cyprus in 1974, there was again a, a station that transmitted that my eyes was still alive and so on. Mm -hmm. It's just technology, it's there to be used and, and at any point, you know, and, Well, yeah, uh, we didn't study the feedback, to be honest. Yeah. We got like sporadic uh, elements because it was a workshop. We just presented it. We, you know. It's interesting to see that most of the graphics, you know, were gone very soon. But that's understandable. I mean, it's a, it's a very uh, dynamic area. I mean, if you if you work, if you do any graphics on one edge of it, you know, the next day or two two or three days after it will be gone because other graphics are gone. So it's. Uh, Works that way. Uh, what so it would be, it would be, is it would it be a way to do it over a long period? Yeah. yeah. Well, the good thing is that it's online, so you can. But of course, and you can see it online through your mobile phone too. So you can be there and see it online. So you don't need the QR code. So you can, you can still see it. But I think the QR code is very interesting because it, the very uh, point in space where it happens. That's, that's like a bridge between the real and the virtual space. You know, when you, when you actually click on it and then you download the, the content, it's, it's a, a little bridge between the physical space and the digital space. So that's how, that's how I find it kinesthetically and uh, in a from a psychological perspective, 
very interesting, a more, a more appropriate interface. Um, also, an, an interesting question relating to the to, to present an artwork in the street because it really belongs in the street. The artwork was there. We also presented it in the Museum of Modern Art. So there was a installation with videos from the event with the actual graphics that you could actually click and go online and see. But I, I, I don't feel that the work was there, the work was in the street. Uh, so it's more appropriate to see it there. Uh, 